everybody. Final thoughts time for San Francisco. Which I've been stifling the urge the entire time to uh, bust out into song. That's my one bit of crooning you'll hear from me. And now let's actually talk about the gameplay itself. I mean, Reiner Knizia definitely deserves all the props he gets for being the modern master of board game design. I mean... I, 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 somehow, I mean, how many, has he done thousands of designs yet? Certainly hundreds, and yet he can still come up with something that just completely redefines, um, you know, the idea of a relatively common mechanism called I Split, You Choose, where there's one poor, unlucky player who draws seven cards and has to divide them up into a group of two, a group of two, and a, a group of three. Or, that doesn't add up, but you know what I mean. And then, everybody else picks, oh, I'll take that bundle, I'll take that bundle, and they get le left with the last one. And Jen and I, we played a few um, I Split You Choose games over the years, and... Wow, we do not enjoy them at all. They are so incredibly analysis paralysis inducing that they are just, I mean, my wife just melts in a puddle of brain sweat as she's trying to figure out, well, okay, I know you want this one, so I can't give you that, but I want these too. So if I give you that, is it more valuable for me to get these than those? But I mean, are you even going to take the thing that I offer you? Or are you going to try and figure some other tricky way out? And I mean, it, it just goes round and round and just burns her brain. This is an eye split you choose but on a slow throttle. Because it's not like, oh, look, I've just got four cards. i got to figure out how to divide them. No, no, no. I just have to, every turn, I just draw a card. Okay, I'm just going to add this to one of the bundles. And, you know, it, maybe that puts you over the top rail. Okay, I can't avoid that. I must have that now. I was tempted before, but now I must have it. And I'll take that away. Oh, but the other ones still remain. Who knows where that's going to go? Or, oh, it turns out I didn't care. I, okay, that wasn't enough for me. I'd still have those alone. Am I going to take one of those or no? I'll take another. And, oh, now this combos really well with that. But if I put these two things together, there's no choice about it. I know you'll take those. That's too good for you to have. So, do I put it over here where, oh my god, now there's a big group of three, but none of these work well together. They're, this one's really nice, but, um, you know, but, I mean, it'd be good for, it'd be good for me if I can get these three, because with my layout, I could put them next to each other, and they'd combo. They're useless for you. But on the other hand, there's three cards there. What are you going to do now? And then you have to decide, well, okay, I could take these three that are only marginally useful, or I can leave them for you and they'll be really great for you. But then um, the trick to this game is it's so brilliant. Every time you decide, oh, my turn, instead of just putting more cards out on the display, I will eventually take them. You don't take just them. You take the red tape. And the more of these you have, the more hamstrung you are. The less you can do on future turns. And the more you just have to sit back helpless and watch as um, the other players get to build up the super perfect combos that they wanted and you can't stop them. The more often you take, the more you will get slowed down and the more you help your opponent. And it's Freaking brilliant. Oh my gosh, this is such a smart, simple, elegant idea. Especially when you layer in that one extra little tidbit that um, if everybody, if all players around the table have at least one contract, then everybody has to give one back. So that one player, you know, if you're playing a four-player game, who just keeps waiting and keeps waiting, and then suddenly everybody else is all tied up, and they're like, Muhahaha, I can just let the things come in. Oh my god, look at all these amazing combos I've got. But as soon as they end up taking one of those combos, instead of them taking one contract, um, then every one of their opponents gets to put a contract back, and suddenly they're like, oh, the noose is off, I can breathe again, now I have options. So the interplay between players is brilliant. And while I don't think there's any toys about it, San Francisco is going to be more interesting the more players you have. It does work surprisingly well as a two-player game also, because it becomes a real chess match. I would imagine at four players, really, I can't pay attention to what the player to my right is doing and what the player on the other side of the table is doing. It's just me and what am I giving to the player to my immediate left. If I put this card out, what do they get to take? And um, where, but there's still a whole bunch of other stuff. Those other half of the, that are just kind of almost just throwing stuff in and I'm, oh my God, that fell in my lap. Nobody can keep track of what everybody wants. But in a two player game, you can. And every turn, is, I mean, I said, uh, I split you choose can be really kind of uh, analysis paralysis inducing almost to a debilitating level. At least they can for me and my wife, Jen. I mean, they are, they are literally kryptonite for her as an already AP prone player. 
But uh, this game, even though it's just the slow drip feed of cards, every single one of them is so laden with consequence um, because you know exactly what I need and I know exactly what you need. And every single turn, we are having to grind. Um, okay, if I give you that, is that going to push it over the top? Is that going to make it too sweet for you? Am I okay with you taking that because then that frees me up to build this other thing so I can get something even better later on? But when is the game going to end? I mean, the game can surprise you. Um, you know, if I played one more turn in the game I had just done a run-through for, uh, it would have been over. And I think, at that point, it looks like Jen would have won. Um, sorry, folks. Uh, spoiler alert for the extended playthrough. I came one turn away from finishing the game. Go figure. Uh, anyway, though, uh, so there's constant tension and pressure, even on those simple early turns. Like, the very, very first turn is meaningless because the first player has no choice. They have to play a card. And it doesn't matter where they put it. I almost wonder why they didn't say, hey, you know what? For the start of the game, just put one random card in the first slot just because that first turn just seems weird. But immediately after that, players are having to decide... How good is that one card? Is that one card worth me getting a contract and, and gluing myself down for a little bit? That's a good freaking card. That is a great card to start with. That card gives me a lot of options. And if I don't, somebody else might take it. And so the, the bird in the hand, two in the bush considerations you have in this game are just omnipresent throughout. And they are very tension inducing. Now, all that said, I was really impressed by this game. I really have to doff my cap to the doctor of design, Reiner Knizia. He has done it again. Completely reinvented the wheel, combining drafting, traditional card drafting, with this really interesting slow take on I Split You Choose that is so brilliant and just works so well. But for my wife, it was still very frustrating. Um, you know, analysis to the point where she's like, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'll just put one here. And she often felt like, um, you know, and, and, and this is a rare game where I can cry rush her in it. And uh, so for her, it just, it just, it's not the right type of game for her. It is so, every move you make is so intermeshed with every other player around the table, but especially the player who comes immediately after you. Jen just likes to be able to sit down and play her game and just look at her. Oh, how's it going over there? Oh, that's very interesting. Whereas this game requires you to watch your opponent like a hawk. Because if you are not trying to sculpt the drafting situation they find themselves in, but they're doing it to you, you lose. And Jen, it's just not a good fit for her. Me, I really enjoyed it quite a bit. Although it is... I, I, you know, again, you know, the idea of, oh, hey, the perfect poison pill. I know you want that so bad, but I'm going to make you take this, and that's really going to ruin your chance to finish that skyscraper that was going to allow you to take mine away from me. So it's not aggressive in any way, shape, or form, but you are very, if you're playing smart, proactively always making turns designed to minimize wherever possible every square inch your opponent can claw away. Because remember, this is a low scoring game. 10 points, 11 points, you'll win the game with that, potentially. 14 points, that's a big score. And so, um, you know, every bit counts. I mean, the fact that this game literally comes down to fractions of points on some of the bonuses you can get just goes to underscore that. I, again, very impressive. I don't think it's for us, but I really respect it. And boy, I would love someday to get to play this at a higher player count, which I really do think is where it will come to life and really shine in a big, big way. And that was the run-through, folks, for San Francisco. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.